Well, it's good good to be with you. Well, I, I really don't know where to get started, Mr. H, because uh, like I say, I've known you for so long. I saw you when you came uh, to Charlotte with Jeffrey Bodine and that city Chevrolet car way back when, and people were saying he'll be another one of these guys that just comes in and, you know, makes a splash and then drowns. And you made the splash and darn if you ain't darn just tread water like it's easy. Um, so much has happened in your life and in your career. I got to go all the way back to where you were born. You know, I've had the yeah. privilege to go up there one time and that tobacco farming, farming area up there in Virginia. What lessons did you learn in that little town that helped you I mean, get started, really? Well, I think um, growing up on the farm, the first thing, I guess, uh, working on equipment with my dad. And then uh, I took automotive mechanics in high school and uh, I built a 31 Chevrolet with my dad. I drag raced when I was, I bought the car when I was 14 and for 250 bucks. And on the way to a Richmond to a, uh, a drag race and stopped at a station to get gas and saw this 31 Chevrolet. And I thought, man, you know, I, I'm a Chevrolet guy and I've seen all these 32 Fords, but here's a 31 Chevrolet. looks like a, looks like that. And so my dad and I built that and I raced it. And, uh, but he was involved with uh, Clayton Mitchell and, and Jack Tant and the, the 98 and the 11 modified car. So, I uh, got to go to races with them and, and I was drag racing, but I guess the lesson I learned with my, from my dad on the farm is that you have to count on other people because uh, you, you know, you need a tractor or your barn burns and you have to work together. And, and, uh, and I took that philosophy with me along the way in business and in racing that people are your biggest assets and, take care of your people. They'll take care of you. And if you keep the group together and you learn over the years and been very fortunate to have guys like yourself and Daryl, uh, that made an impact on our company. And, uh, you know, we, you know, just your culture, you'd create a culture of wanting to win and, but you take care of your people. And, and, uh, I walked down pit road, you know, Jeff, I was the youngest guy on pit road. I'd walk, I, I know when I ended up at Daytona and I walked down pit road and I saw junior Johnson and Bud Moore and the wood brothers. And I thought, man, I don't need to be here with this crowd. I'm uh, you know, I got no business even being here. And uh, now I'm the old guy on pit road. So 40 mm -hmm. years, is a long time to be doing anything. No, that's uh, yeah, that's the reason why we were talking about you and using the term amazing because your run of 40 years, um, I mean, I guess if, if you could have started earlier, you'd have been right there with the Petty family and you'd been here for 75 years if you could, because I don't know, it's like like you're saying, once that speed bug or whatever you want to call it gets yeah. you gets you bit, uh, it's hard to get away from it because you know you were not only in the, in the cars and drag racing, you did boats. Uh, you mean it was just anything that went fast you know, you kind of like you wanted to touch it and you wanted to be a part of it. And you're not just, you didn't want to buy it. You wanted to work on it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, if you think about my beginning in, uh, in cup racing, when I go back, Robert G was from the same little town I'm from. Mm -hmm. And when I got to Charlotte, <clears throat> he, uh, he had a dirt car and Robert and Dale Jr.'s, you know, grandfather. And, um, uh, so he got me to get involved with him in his dirt car. And then one day he said, Hey, let's do a, a, a you know, Bush car. And I said, okay. Right. And, uh, and the first race I was partners with him, we won in Charlotte. And I thought this is pretty easy. You know, <laughs> you make a deal one day, you win a race the next. And, uh, yeah. but now when I, I was boat racing and, uh, Jimmy Wright got killed in one of the boats and, uh, and we had won national championships and we're doing really well. And I, I was driving and I just couldn't go back and do it anymore. So I was storing the boats at Harry Hyde's shop and, and Max Mulliman had been looking for sponsors for the boat. And he called me and he said, Hey, would you be interested in, uh, 
and having a cup team with uh, Kenny Rogers and C.K. Spurlock and have Richard Petty drive. And I thought, well, is that a trick question? Because I felt like, you know, we're going to have the king of country music and uh, and then Richard Petty, the king of NASCAR, and and they had a sponsor. And, and so I said, well, I got, I'm over here at Harry's. And Harry was, you know, said he, he could do it. And, uh, and that's the way we were going to start. And then the deal kind of unraveled with Richard and, 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 and CK and those guys. And I was left with, uh, five people, three of them, two of them volunteers. And Harry was making 500, uh, a week. And I, you know, if you think about how I started, I rented the shop. I was renting the equipment. Um, I was renting the gears. We were running Chrysler transmissions and rear ends in, in that Monte Carlo. Right. <laughs> and with three people and you, you couldn't show up today. We built a couple of cars and, and I said, well, let's, we got to go on now. We all start racing, hire Jeff Bodine. And, um, uh, man, you know, you know, the story, we came so close to shutting the doors, but, uh, yeah. I don't think you could, I don't think you could get into NASCAR any cheaper than I did because I had Harry sitting there wanting to do it so bad. No, you, you, uh, you definitely came into the sport, you know, a little bit in an uncharacteristic manner, but at the same time, good choices. And again, you said it earlier about choosing the people that you surround yourself with. I mean, Harry yeah. Hyde had a ton of experience. He was a winner. Um, sometimes yeah. very difficult to work with or <laughs> even work for, but yeah. You know, he he had a passion to win. I mean, you know, he was doing his he was pulling every trick he could out of his back pocket to, yeah. to get a car in victory lane. Yeah, he Harry was um uh, I, th I think the one thing I saw with Harry <clears throat> is he wanted to he wanted to finish the race and he would uh he had a helicopter coolers and I mean the cars were heavy, but uh right but, but they, they didn't break. With that being said, and again, this is not a trick question and I, know, I hopefully it's not that sound redundant, but working in the car industry, like you did, and you're extremely successful there. And you talk about the, the teamwork and everything, which, which business do you feel like you have gained more out of that helps you with other other business. I mean, did the car business give you the uh, experience and the savvy that you've incorporated in racing, or did working within the racing and you know give you more to go and benefit your car business? Well, I think when you, if you ask me, uh, what drove me to do multi car team, uh, you know, once we won a race. Um, uh, and, and we got a sponsor for the, uh, for the second year. Well, actually we picked up a sponsor for the half of the first year. And then, then we got a, we got a sponsor for a full-time Levi Garrett and then Folgers approached us. And, uh, and I had Tim Richmond sitting there that I wanted to begin with. Um, I think what I learned in the automobile business was you, if you've got great people, you can, and at about in that time I had probably, um, uh, six deals, maybe six, seven deals. And, um, and, and I would learn you work together and you get that many smart people. If everybody's on the same page, you can do good things and you share information. So I thought, well, in racing, if I've got, here's a guy I wanted Tim Richmond and here's a sponsor, which was hard to, hard to get a sponsor um i could if i get the two to work together which that was that was something i found pretty hard to get done but uh you know you you have multiple people uh you'll you'll be able to grow faster and you'll you'll learn more and you should be able to do better well i didn't realize how hard getting people working together and racing was, uh, you know, you know how that goes. 
everybody oh. doesn't want to share. I think it's taken me, I think it's me 40 years to get that done, Jeff. But, uh, but now, no, I, I was getting ready to say, I, 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 having worked for you, I saw some of those moments uh, in some of the meetings and how sometimes you were trying to, you know, we'll go back to the Chad and, and, and Jimmy Cookie situation. You tr were trying to do that with people, yeah. you know, like Harry Hyde and all those guys uh, that, that were older than me and, and, and more experienced than me at that time. They protected secrets like their life depended yeah. on. And and they want you said you want me to give them what? I'm yeah. not giving them nothing. You know, I wouldn't yeah. give them the time of day. You know, it it was a dog eat dog mm -hmm. world. Even though we were we would enjoy each other's camaraderie, when it came down to drop the green flag, you know, mm -hmm. all bets were off. And I understand your your dilemma, but the personalities of the crew chiefs, team manager, but more crew chiefs and the drivers. Did you figure out a secret way to do that? Because you did it. I mean, look at the number of championships you have won. Look yeah. at the number of races, over 300 wins. Yeah. Um, you've done something right. What have you figured out? And is it a situation? Do you cut it off? You know, like you see something starting to go wrong. Do you cut it off or do you let it run its course and then put it back? You basically put the train back on the track afterwards. Well, I'm going to tell you a funny story that you'll like. <clears throat> excuse me so gary nelson is running one car and and with bodine and then we have tim richmond and harry together i moved harry and harry and bodine didn't work so i had, I had to separate them you know and so so <clears throat> we were running front steer rear steer cars right and so gary nelson had come up with something pretty trick on the front end of his car and so I had, and I wanted Harry to try it, but I knew Harry wouldn't. So I went to Harry and I said, Hey, Harry, listen, I want you to help. I want you to help Gary Nelson figure out how to get his car to work. And so I want you to go over and look at it. I want you to tell him, tell, tell him what, what he needs to do to make it right. And so I told Gary, I said, now, look, I know once he sees this, he's going to go back and do it, but he's not going to do it unless I'm bringing him over there to tell you what's wrong with your car. And you, you got to go <laughs> along with me. Okay. <laughs> he has to ask Gary about it. So, yeah. so I took Gary, I took Harry over there and he was critiquing Gary's car, everything that was wrong with it. And they went right back to his shop and I didn't say a word. And he started fixing, putting the front end under his car the same way. And, and really picked them up a bunch, but now as time has gone on and I put them all in one place and all the crew chiefs together, it's, it's kind of been like, Hey, this is, you go from having to play politics and do what you need to do as much as you can. And you remember when we were running for championships and, and it was going to come down between two car, our two cars back in the points when you already had it locked in, it was going to be one of those two guards. I right. would go to, I would go to the guys and say, look, at the end of this race, one of us is going to be a champion. Now I want you to know this. I'm going to the guy that finishes second first and, and tell them a good job. And then I'm coming over to see you guys that have won it. Cause I wanted them to know I wasn't playing favored. So it was a lot of hard work to make mm -hmm. it work. But in the day's world, everybody's doing it that way now. Uh, right. But it, it was a struggle to make it work. And at some point in time, you have to put your foot down and say, this is the way we're going to do it. If you, wanted, if you can't do it this way, then you got to go somewhere else because this is the way we're going to do it. And, uh, yeah. but it's not easy because at the end of the day, you got four teams and you go to the track and each team wants to win, but you got to convince them how many times is it going to come down between the two of you? Well, with me, it's come down a lot between the two of them, but, uh, or the three of them, but, uh, you know, and, and probably the most unbelievable deal was when we ran one, two, three, four, Dover 
and they were shifting spots because of pit stops and everything. But uh, you don't have that happen very often. And uh, so anyway, long story short, it's not easy when they have to race against each other, but you learn that that's, uh, that makes you stronger. And if that's the way it works out, then you're better off knowing that you, you know, just got to beat one of your teammates. Well, it's like you're pointing out for the, for the, um, you know, people who don't really get it, you got to look big picture sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you've got to sacrifice, and I think you understand that. And I've experienced one of those talks that you had with us one time when we had all had a little attitude. And, uh, you you know, we're saying, well, I'm going to listen to what you got to say. And then one of the team members, and I won't bring his name up, but he, he, uh, he said something that didn't exactly go the way you thought it should have been put. And you, you pretty much told us, now look, damn it. I own this race team. I'm giving you an opportunity to express yourself, but if you're going to be like this, there's the door. <laughs> it's like, uh, you could have heard a pin drop because that, you know, we stepped over the line. Okay. Yeah. And I know we did. And it was good for me to hear you say that. And I think it was good for all involved that day. And yeah. when we left out of there, I think we all had a better attitude about, yeah, you know, we're, we're missing the big picture here. I mean, you were trying to do big picture racing. And I think it's really important that people are watching here today, understand the success that you have had didn't come without the roller coaster going to the bottom of the hill, just yeah. like it was as great as the view was when you got to the top. And so it's, uh, it's always those life lessons. I think that are more important uh, than any numbers you put on the board. It's how you got those numbers and how yeah. people work together and how kind of sacrifices that they made. And uh, like I said, in 40 years, uh, I'm pretty sure you've experienced more than anybody else with the exception of maybe the Petties, the Wood Brothers, and they've been there longer, or Roger Penske. But, you know, I think that's one of the things that's incredible. But this, I want to talk about this season, you know, before we run out of time, because I think it's been one of those kind of seasons this, uh, again, it's amazing. And starting off with touching on one of your young drivers, because I like the combination. And I, and I know you got, you know, Chad Knauss and Jeff Gordon that are helping run these teams. But to me, William Byron and Rudy Fugel uh, have to be a bright spot in 2023 when it comes to Hendrick Motorsports. Absolutely. When you you look at William, I'm, I've always been amazed at William to learn how to race on a computer and not have any more seat time than he has in the cars. And, but such a, uh, you know, unbelievable, uh, puts more effort into, you know, simulation, studying tapes, but he, he just works his butt off. He and Rudy are a combination of people that believe in each other. And you know how that works. It's, it's, uh, you know, they have total confidence in each other and that's, that's hard to do. You know, they just, they race together in the trucks. And if I should have brought him on earlier and just didn't think he didn't do it, but, uh, but that combination, uh, that's going to be a good combination for a long time because William's just going to get better and better and better. Young guy, uh, still amazes me. Great qualifier. Uh, but he goes back, he and Rudy, and I'll tell you something about Rudy. We get on the plane together. I always like to bring the crew chiefs home with me so they can debrief or I get to spend time with them, in a, especially mm -hmm. from Phoenix or somewhere. And when Rudy hadn't won the race, he ain't going to get, he's not going to talk to you very much. He's going <laughs> to be on that. He's going to be in that computer digging, but uh, yeah. what a great combination. And, and, and it's confidence. It's confidence in each other. He gives William confidence. Uh, William gives Rudy confidence that he's going to drive what Rudy wants him to. What he, I'm going to tell you what I think the car needs, but Rudy, you tell me and I'm going to go drive it. So um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's probably one of the, the best relationships car uh, driver and, and crew chief that I've seen in a long, long time. 
and I can't, and I'll agree with you because I had some experience working uh, with Rudy over at KBM when he was there and leading that uh, organization. And I come to find out real quick that the passion he has for winning, uh, no matter who's behind the wheel of whatever vehicle he's working on, uh, he gives, uh, you know, over a hundred percent. And yeah. he, he tries to get in not only the engineer engineering part to where he's accurate on adjustments, but he also knows how to work and pick up the, uh, the psyche, psyche of the driver, as you already pointed out, getting that confidence in a driver, making him understand that, and confidence is not just, you know, yeah, you can do it. This is why you can do it. Go on yeah. down in there and trust what we've done to the race car. It will, it will be there for you when you, when you need to lean on it. And once you can do, do that, convince them that, that that'll happen, uh, you've got a major battle solved right there. And, and again, they've been fun to watch. And I, like I say, they've got to be, a high point in uh, the 2023 season so far. Yeah. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is um, let's talk about Lamont. Uh, I don't know how you feel about it after it, you're looking in, in the rearview mirror, but I don't think that there was a lot of people in, in this, in the country that were not Rick Hendrick and King Chevrolet fans for you guys going across the pond over there and representing uh, you know, all of us. And what did you, what was, what did you get out of that? What did you take away? I think that's one of the coolest things I've ever done. I, um, uh, I was, I had no idea how much work it was going to be and, and, and to, to develop a car that when we started was five seconds slower at, uh, Sebring than the cars we needed to be as, in the class with and uh headlights and 24 i mean i'm holding my breath to run 600 miles with valve springs and valve trains and say okay we're gonna run you know 3,000 miles uh so all of those things were like a, a just an unbelievable task and i think when jim france talked to me about it i and said hey i want to do this and i said okay let's go do it i had no idea what i was getting into but uh uh, a tremendous amount of work and effort from everybody from NASCAR, from our organization. And I was, then I was concerned, okay, we're going to go over here with this car and we're going to jump into the middle of this 24 hour Le Mans with all the prototypes and every, the Porsches and the Ferraris and, and how's the crowd going to react? How are people going to react to this car being in this event, this, this world famous event? And, and I never felt more proud to be an American or NASCAR member than I was over there because the fans went crazy over that car. Um, you just watched the, you know, 300,000 people. And when that car would come by, of course you could hear it, uh, before it got there and compared to the other cars, those, and, uh, but you just watched the cameras as it went down the straightaway and the way the crowd reacted. And when we got there and our guys entered the pit crew competition against air jacks with a jack and beat them <laughs> and, and everybody <laughs> went nuts over that, that just kind of launched the weekend. And then the car ran, ran the race and, uh, and, 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 and we had, we hadn't broke the gear. Uh, we would have, we weren't really racing in a GT class, but we were leading it. And, uh, and the co class we were supposed to be able to run with, we were faster than, and, uh, qualified out for qualified them. And so, um, just a lot of, a lot of pride. I love working with the drivers. We had formula one guys that were famous to see fans come up with 48, um, die cast cars for jimmy to sign and when the race when jimmy crossed the finish line he had his big ovation as the ferrari that won the overall deal and so people chanting usa 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 uh i think it was jesse said i don't know i mean how many thousands of articles written the beast and everything was positive so uh for me that was uh that was a bucket list deal. I had no idea how it was going to turn out. 
but uh you know it's it was it was phenomenal and so much pride and i'll tell you what really made us all feel good while we were over there doing it i think we we're running sears point and the race was going on jeff andrews was walking down pit road and had pit crew members come up and stop him and say from other teams hey man thank you guys you made us proud pit crew guys won that deal and uh you made us proud and so uh that meant so much and i, I mean again when you're in a foreign country and people are chanting usa and you got the car there with the flag on it and you're representing our country it was cool i had uh somebody tell me that a, an announcer a reporter someplace said the americans have come over to Le Mans with a mule at a thoroughbred race and with the with the laugh was on us when they unveiled it, we kind of find out they had secretary and secretary in the car in the truck or something like that. That the, <laughs> you had snuck in there and everybody was thinking you were going to be in the way, and you had something that really you know kind of surprised everybody. And and again, uh, all the comments and all the stall of feedback. Again, uh, I know what it's like when you're at a racetrack and you hear and you see this stuff. And that's to me is what's important. I can tell right now you're, you, you're, you're grinning and beaming just like you were at Lama, I guess, you know, when all this was going on saying, you know, it's been hard work, but this is what we've accomplished. And I, I know you're a man of accomplishments. Uh, that leads me to my next potential accomplishment. You're getting ready to get into. Tell us a little bit about now going to Indy. Uh, how about that? I mean, uh, you got Kyle Larson, which he is, you know, arguably just talent upon talent upon talent. And he's already gone to India and passed his rookie test and shown it. Hey, you better look out. You know, this guy's a real deal and this is getting serious. So are you excited about that? I'm I'm really excited. I think I'm going to feel a little bit like I did when I went to Daytona the first time I'm going to walk down pit road that day and say, I don't know if I'm supposed to be here or not, but here we are. <laughs> but we're we're I think we're we're in good shape. Uh I was really it was so cool. Roger, uh when I got to the for the rookie test, Roger had put my name on the pylon. He and I are good buddies and yeah. we were each other, but we we're great friends and uh and and uh I I think it's gonna be unbelievable to be there on the day uh of that race and have a car in that race and uh you know just to be there i don't have i told kyle i said well the first thing we got to do is qualify and we just got to get in the race and then hopefully we'll have a good day but uh it's going to be fun working with the mclaren folks has been great i i i, I wanted to, i want to own a big deal for me to own the car and be yeah. able to bring it home, whatever's left of it when it's over. But, uh, you know, I, uh, it, it's one of those, it's one of those bucket list deals. I'll, I will say this. I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't Larson pushing and pushing and Jeff Gordon saying, Hey, we ought to do this. And, and then I get fired up about it, but I, I don't think I would journey into that if Kyle hadn't been constantly from the first day we talked, Hey, I want to run Indy. I want to go to Indy. So, uh, I think, um, it's going to be a, a, a great experience. And, and there again, at the end of the day in the museum, I'll be able to walk through there and I'll see garage 56 and I'll see the original, you know, all-star racing car. And, and I'm, if you, and I, if you go through our museum or my car collection, I love history and I love, I keep everything. When you grow up on a farm, you keep everything. So I've got everything I've ever, every, yeah. you know, every picture, every trophy, every whatever. So it'll be cool. Well, Mr. H, thank you very much for taking some time out for us here with uh, our Partrait Race Industry Week. Uh, it's been an honor. And again, it's, it's a pleasure working for you. And it's good to always see you, boss. Well, you did a great job with us. And I tell you, you had a tough job that handling Daryl Waltrip. So I think you earn your money, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Great honor to have you on. What a delight.